Hi, my name is Jeremy Haskell, and I'm with jobsandme.com, and we're here at the 17th Annual Maine HR Convention at the Samoset Inn and Resort in Rockport, Maine. I'm joined by, now by Dr. Dora Ann Mills, who is the Vice President for Clinical Affairs at the University of New England. So thank you for joining us, Dr. Mills. Hey, thank you. It's a wonderful honor to be here today. Yeah, we're very happy to have you here. Uh, and you're not from HR, and you talk today about kind of what I wish I knew about HR and things like that. Obviously, working in uh, healthcare, you're dealing with people a lot. So. What are some of the key things that you think HR really can take away and, and, and how it's helped you through your career? Well, you know, I definitely would not be here today if it wasn't for HR. And I think before I, I took the job at the state uh, in 1996 as the director of the then Bureau of Health, which became the main CDC, I thought of HR as the people you go to to fill out forms <laughs> or the people you tell that, you know, you're pregnant, you need a maternity leave or something. <laughs> But what I learned during my almost 15 years at the state was that HR were the, my partners. They were the partners that helped us to build bridges, build bridges with our, um, across our agency, for instance, to reorganize our agency when we got an infusion of tobacco settlement funds. Mm -hmm. um, they were also uh, the ones who helped us to set our ethical and moral compass. So when we had some changes where we needed to make sure that uh, that uh, the, the policies were applied fairly um, and that everybody had the same expectations given to them uh, or fair expectations that our um, HR was the one were, were the ones that uh, we partnered with to and that really enabled us to mm -hmm. set that ethical and moral compass across the agency uh, when we had the pandemic flu uh, with H1N1 mm -hmm. and we suddenly needed to mobilize a lot of our resources and focus them on H1N1. HR was the one that, they were the ones that helped us to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and we knew what the outcome was that we desired in all of these examples, but HR were the ones that helped us to get there and mm -hmm. knew, knew the roadmap knew how to take us through that mo roadmap to get to those outcomes. So what I learned in my almost 15 years at the state is that HR, it's not the, just the people you go to for the <laughs> forms, but they really are your partners in management to get the outcomes that you want. Well, that's very uh, glad to hear that, especially coming from someone outside of the industry. Obviously, we that work in the field understand that we, the reputations that we have. So it's very nice to hear that kind of a response coming from you. But you've also had some other kind of non-traditional experience in terms of um, traveling and volunteering. So you talked about some very poignant tales. Could you share some of those with us, just real briefly? Yeah, um, you know, I think I, one of the best advices I ever got was from my aunt, um, who is actually Danish. My uh, biological uncle married her years ago, and she ran um, an agency, uh, uh, actually the, kind of the equivalent of the Library of Congress in Denmark. Oh. So before I took the job with the state, I asked her for some advice, because I had not been in management before, so I <laughs> wondered, oh my goodness, what am I getting into? And she said, you know, it's most important that you just maintain a strong common sense, and that you do that by leading with your head and leading with your heart that if you just lead with both your head and your heart, you're gonna have strong common sense and that's what's most important. And that also had resonated because a few years before that I had spent time volunteering in India and Mother Teresa had given me some similar advice. She said um, at the end of my month volunteering in Calcutta, I had shared with her that I was feeling guilty about going back to my home state of Maine and yet I was very drawn to go back there. But I felt guilty because there was so much dire poverty uh, where I was working in mm -hmm. Calcutta. And she said, you know, if where you are going you will work with love and love your work, that's where you are called to be. If where you are going you are called, you are, will work with love and love your work, that is where you are called to be. And you know, those words have stayed with me all these 20 years because they're the same as what my aunt had told me. And sure. they were what HR helped me to do. I was very, I've always been committed, inspired so by people like my aunt and Mother Teresa to try to lead, to strive to lead with my heart and my head. And HR were the partners that helped me to do that. Well, thank you very much for sharing your story. That's great advice. And, uh 
Thank you for joining us at the convention. Thank you. It's a great honor to be here, and it's a what an amazing adventure. Uh, convention, I mean. <laughs> well, it's a <laughs> little bit too. of <laughs> it. Definitely is. <laughs> bit Thank of both. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks, thanks for your time.